everyone. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, so I just thought I would start out. Um, I've got some art supplies and a skull and a flower from our garden. And these are all just things that I personally like and um, I thought it'd be a fun still life to show. So I'm probably only going to record half of this live and then do the other half uh, with a time lapse. So it's a little hard to concentrate and get my best work done when I'm doing the live videos, but hopefully they've been helping out a little bit. Actually, I don't think I wanted to do that. I think I'll do this. I might not be very chatty during this one just because I don't have my iPad set up. It's hard to keep checking the comment section. So I'm going to try to just focus on the negative space right now. And the negative space is all the little spaces between the objects. So it's on a black background. And I'm just going to focus on the black part. And hopefully it turns out. So it's kind of hard to tell. But I like doing it this way. It's kind of neat to see it all come together. And my sentences are not fully formed. Sorry. There's some pencils that I put over on this side for the composition. I might just cover that all. I'm working pretty watery this time around. palette knife over here which I don't really use for gouache painting but I find it really useful around the studio it's a really drab day out right now so I figured the studio painting would probably be better I've been trying to get some new pieces made for an upcoming show and the theme that I came up with for my own self, although it wasn't necessary to come up with a theme, was um, home. And I'm trying to vary it up, do some different stuff, things that personally mean a lot to me. Oh, this part's always tough with the, all the teeth. Something like that.
This is a, I think it's a red fox skull. Still life is a little interesting too because it shows you how I approach more busy and complicated paintings. mason jar back there because I paint tons of mason jars but do you see it coming together a little better hopefully you do most likely I'll be going over all this black again and this is one of those metal jars I love painting these things. I love painting all the different textures and surfaces. All right. I don't know why I started with that brush. That really didn't make a lot of sense, but that's all right. Might as well do the other brushes while I'm at it. actually eating popcorn that's awesome nice little Monday painting all right you can probably barely see the color that I'm putting down but it's uh, tinted with a little bit of yellow ochre and some other colors that I have just on my palette. I'm mostly going for um, value right now, and I'm not super picky about the colors at this point. So I'm just swishing around and picking all these random colors on the palette. I hate painting teeth. Because you have to count the teeth and be semi-accurate. You can't really get away with just winning it and making it up. Everyone's asking, what am I painting? So either the other watchers will answer that have been watching longer, or you're just gonna have to wait. Because <laughs> I'm not gonna answer it. It's kind of a mystery, right?
See, I'm not being super accurate with the teeth right now. I'll probably go in a little bit later and try to focus on them a little better. Because that's just a mess. a brush over here and then a palette knife already starting to get in some of these shadows which is one of the first things that you generally want to do if you're using natural light which I am I don't have any well I have a light but it's for my uh, painting so you guys can all see but everything else is natural light Now, I'm getting a lot thicker where I've, I'm feeling more confident about what's gonna go here. And I'm using this little, well, it's not little, it's a half inch flat. So I'm gonna go bigger and try to fill up these spaces a little better. There's nothing really going on here. I've got a brush or a pencil coming in this side and shadow here pencil here another pencil here not too concerned with the light changing today because it's a very overcast day right now. Got a peony back here. Here are some paint tubes. Some old used ones. Which 
basically. Kind of extends out a little. It's a little too dark up here. There's actually a lot of light coming in through the back, coming down this way. And the darkest parts are right here. And we're going, oh, the light's changing. which is fine. I think it's mostly going to be cloudy, but um, if the light does come out permanently, then that's okay. I prefer having more light anyway, but we're just going to win it and see how things end up. Okay, get in there. back to this little half half inch flat and then kind of using that as a weird measuring tool I don't have the most accurate measurements <laughs> I kind of eyeball a lot of stuff And when I'm using a color, I always say this in all my videos, but I'm always looking for where else I can put the color. Got this yellow tube. The lid is pretty bright. It's got a bit of pink from the peony. And that pink uh, is reflecting on all the surfaces that are going this direction. Just tiny bits of it.
mason jar. There are some brushes in here. Brush here and a brush here. The red brush kind of in here somewhere. And the bottom looking too watery. Something like this. I'm working pretty watery for a reason over here and that's because everything on this jar feels a little blurred and it's also in the background so that's my reasoning I might end up changing it take a minute to clean off my palette. It's getting pretty sloppy. So like I said, uh, for those that missed it, I'm only going to be doing this for the first hour and then for the probably the second hour I will try to do a time lapse so you can see it being wrapped up, but it's a little hard to have the video on me and finish a good piece. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it's just a little too distracting. You know, there's that pressure. So we have some uh, reflections coming in from outside. It's just all the, it's super green out right now. This brush is tinted pretty blue, probably because I don't wash it very well. And I have my color race pencils. I bought a huge box and I'm almost out of them. Go through them pretty quick. There's another one hiding back here. everyone, everyone that's waving. Let's 
get in this peony. It's not in any water, so it might droop faster than I want. I was really happy about these. We spent way too much money on this plant. I think it cost um, over $100 for this peony plant. And then we thought it died because we're not super good at growing things. We try, but it came back. And I was really happy. So this is the first time I saw it blooming. These are so tricky to paint. I had to put uh, the ultramarine blue in here because this is my most used color, without a doubt. For every one tube I buy of everything else, I buy three tubes of ultramarine blue. I don't know why I use it so much. I don't even like the color. It's okay, but um, personally, I prefer like a thalo blue. It's just a very useful color. some highlights on this metal part of the brush. And a couple of them over here too. And then over here. So I'm trying to get in my lightest lights. And then I can use these lights to compare all the other values to down the line.
Concentration mode. Okay. So by now, hopefully, you can tell what it is. I think it's starting to read pretty well. Oh, I have this new brush. It's um, Princeton, and this is called a Lawn Round. Let's see if you can get a better view. But this is a size 8, and I really like this brush. I got it at the Plein Air Convention as a sample. And I was very excited because, uh, hold on, sorry. Look at that point. It's like got an extended, really sharp point to it. And I've been using this brush quite a bit. I really like it. I was sticking with flats only for a while. And I still think you can just use flats. But uh, I kind of like the different brush marks. It's fun to experiment. Try to get at these teeth a little better. Hmm, all right, I'm getting a little confused by all the teeth, which is pretty common. It's just hard to keep track of them sometimes. Something like that is good enough.
work in some of these darks. And kind of carve out the shape of the teeth. Now we have the teeth behind it to worry about. It's my least favorite part of painting skulls. Hopefully you can't hear my heavy breathing. <laughs> so focus. We have a little tooth back here. Bigger tooth. Something like that. And then it's a little bit dark over here. Okay. I'm gonna cover up these whites. Was exhausting. All right, I'm gonna work on the peony a little more now that the initial layer has dried a bit. Always working on values. to squint and simplify this. back. Get in a little bit of the reflected colors. Whew. Okay. I think it looks a little better.
for the pinks, I'm using a quinacridone rose. I'm trying to avoid using my opera pink because of light vest issues. Oh man, I forgot my little sign. My little, uh, this is Bosch <laughs> sign. Oh well. This is probably too dark. I want to get in more darks though into the painting. Wow, that drip pretty bad. And I like putting in another layer of paint on the background because it helps me cut out the shapes and work on the edges a little better. Mm -hmm. All right, so hint of 
light. It's a little more blue. Sun is out. We have some details of the mason jar coming up. brush handle not still wearing the slippers. I actually had to go outside today. So I'm just wearing my normal shoes. But his slippers are so comfortable. They're way more comfortable than mine. dogs are totally passed out right now. Tried taking them on uh, Pancake's first walk and he was not great. He was very scared. He's a very scared dog. Which is weird because Coconut is so confident. put some more darks into the peony since I feel like the eye is going right there so we want to make sure it looks nice but hopefully not overdone too light. I 
want to be able to show a little bit of what's going on in the center. So hopefully using the brush stroke direction to get that. And that flower definitely needs work. Oh, let's see here. Time to clean my palette. Kind of step back and assess the painting so far. <laughs> Let me show you all the setup that I have. So here's the painting so far. I would say it's about halfway done, maybe 60%. Um, there's a lot of detail work, but right now I just filled in all the canvas. And you have a general idea of what it looks like. Here is my still life setup. Just a lot of clutter, a lot of stuff. I use this bad boy for my bigger, like 18 by 24 paintings. And you can see all my little blue brushes. They're not blue brushes, blue pencils that I sharpened down to little nubs. Quite a few of those laying around. Here's another one. Here's my palette. And the brushes that I'm using, but for the most part, I've just been using my one inch flat, my three fourths inch flat, half inch flat, and then this new, um, new lawn round. I really like this brush. So here's the whole setup. My phone usually goes right here. See? Yeah, I love chaos paintings too. It's so fun. Here's Coconut. Coconut, say hi. She says hi. And over here. It's a little pancake. He was eating his lunch. He's not being bad. He just likes to nap in there. Oh, and I repotted my plants. Sorry, this is going a little off track. But look at my bird's nest fern. My, I never know how to pronounce it. And I'm kind of like hiding behind there. Look how creepy that is. Anyway, I think I'm about to end the video. Um, I will do a time lapse of the rest of the video or the painting and then I will be posting both of these on my Instagram TV. So thank you all for watching. Sorry if I didn't answer any of your questions. I was pretty focused this time around, but um, I will try to go back and uh, read through them and answer anything that's new. So thank you all again. Bye.